the Ya Ahad Ya Samad Salli Ala Ahmad, is there a specific number of times we should recite or should we recite as much as possible? Yeah, you can in your meditation, you're just sitting and reciting that, you can recite it as many times as you want. But best to you know do few of them for maybe four or five, five minutes, six minutes so that you don't get tired from the meditation. And then focusing on your heart but that's again after you've made the other meditation, made the connection with the shaykh because it's all a foundation. If your connection with the shaykh isn't strong, these meditations and these zikrs don't take their full effect. So first it has to be the connection with the shaykh that you're visualizing the shaykh, you're in the oceans of the shaykh, the fires of the shaykh is upon you, you have a strong connection with the shaykh. Then you begin to practice with that same madad. That say they dress me from these lights and from this secret, Ya Sayyidi Ya Muhammad and khafi in your heart to ignite the ahadiyya, samadiyya, reality of the soul and the light that Allah's depositing of Nur Muhammad And that's why the mawlid is so important because the celebration and that's why three days a week we're making intention for Milad al Nabi under Mawlana Shaykh Abdul Faizid Dabastani's intention. That to be dressed from the immensity of its realities from the Sultan and awliya that, that participated and, and put together those types of mawlids with that intention we're asking Allah to dress us. So with those mawlids opens the birth of that light within the heart of the person and the being so that their Muhammadan reality it begins to blossom and begin to guide them and direct them towards Allah's rida and satisfaction inshaAllah. As Salaamu Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam wa Is there such a thing as spiritual heart pain? Sometimes we experience such pain but it disappears when we look at the shaykh's photos or do zikr, forgive me. Yes yeah, sure there's such thing as everything. If you're experiencing it, it's very real for you. So the heart is an energy location, like an energy instrument and sometimes the energy can come in vibrations that are peaceful and there can become energies that are in huge fluctuations in which it's very heavy onto the heart and they feel like their heart is palpitating or that they're going to have heart attack or it's all in Allah's hands. So if the energy is coming and it's coming in too strong and too heavy, you just try to ground and breathe and make your connection, look to the face of the shaykhs, look to the madad, ask for the madad and then Allah inshaAllah to make it to be softer but make sure that you always have wudu, that you have your taweez, that your head is covered and that you're in the proper attire and mentality for the tafakkur and contemplation. If it should hit you Outside of those then quickly try to make your wudu and wash your mouth, put siwak into your mouth and pray your two rakahs salat al wudu and then make your tafakkur in case something is trying to attack the heart, inshaAllah. Mm, as Alaikum dearest Sayyidi Walaykum As Salaam Thank you for everything. Uh, could you please explain how to understand the existence of negative energies and negative characteristics? Example, Satan and disobedience, even though creation is created from the ocean of Muhammad Rasulullah, let it process on them. Please forgive me. Huh? Oh, we can answer that one. <laughs> he, he just came back from Kashmir, so he knows. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, inshaAllah. Those are like philosophy questions, huh? Okay. So then the 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 <laughs> was a student was asking a shaykh, oh I don't understand, Sayyidi, if shaitan is made from fire and Allah is going to put him in fire, isn't that his own element? And then the shaykh smacked him in the face. <laughs> And he's, wow, why'd you do that, Sadie? I said, because my hand is skin, your face is skin, did it hurt? <laughs> when Allah wants it to hurt, it's going to hurt. So it doesn't matter, these things that we mentally try to sort of concoct in our mind, it doesn't make sense but that's not how Allah operates. When Allah wants the fire to hurt a fire being, 
he's going to make it hurt. So skin on skin hurts. These, these realities are not for the mind but into the element of the heart. All that we have to understand is Allah made this dunya a game, a game. He threw us on to the field and said, now take your ball and go that direction. And he put somebody on the other side of the field that says, no you're not going to do that. And our life is about taking the ball and going to the other side and make the goal that we have to go. Now why that guy is on the field, who created this guy on the field, that's not ours, that's Allah's area. Allah said, I created the game, I didn't ask you if you're going to come into existence or not but I brought you into existence, I put you on the field, now live a life and score your touchdown. Take your ball and run, then the shiuks come like a coach. That, hey, you know when you have this ball, don't think he's not coming after you. That do these zikrs, do these practices and know that shaitan is coming in your every move. So that's why then when the believer is guided, he's not uh, heedless on the field of life. He knows shaitan is, is planning at every direction. He's going to come from behind him, he's going to come from the right of him, from the left of him and in front of him from above him and from below him. And as a result of the hikmah of guidance that's how then they can instruct the people to play on the field, oh watch out. You know in our past we understood that when, when something's over there be careful of that, be careful of this. And they give instructions on how to live our life and successfully play this game. So that's why the mawlids, the zikrs, all of these build up your stamina and build up your presence so that you become a very formidable player on the field. Imagine if the zikr made you ten times bigger on the field and the salawats made you another ten times bigger, you pretty much start going down the field and just sort of knocking the shaitans out of the way. And that's why they don't want us to do these practices, they don't want you to follow these coaches and what we call shaykhs. They don't want us to know all of these things because they like when the person is little tiny and they smash them and they all 20 people pile up on top of that person because shaitan likes to win his game. So alhamdulillah that Allah He made the game to be geared towards winning. That's why every time they score a point they only get one but every time you score a point Allah gives you ten. So hasanat is ten. Ten rewards. Sayyat is only one point. So they have to work really hard to push you back, and Allah then is, is moving the game in our direction that you know, move, 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 score, and you get lots of points. So, alhamdulillah, Allah has an immense love for us, and we have to get up and struggle. That's why our life is about the struggle, not the victory. You know who scores and doesn't score, our life is about struggling towards the end of that field. And it doesn't end until you take your last breath. And even in your last breath life is just completely unknown to us. Its reality and its secrets are unknown to us. What happens in your last seven breaths when you go, <sighs> every breath can be expanded by Allah in an infinite time of space. What happens in that breath, where does Allah take the soul at that breath? But what's important is that when He guides and He wants to guide a servant, He gives them to the hands of His guidance and His awliya. Their soul and their wujud is with the servant on their last breaths so that they're there to witness, to defend against satanic attack at that moment and to take them to the destiny which Allah has written for them to achieve. So like having a, an attorney present with you at your side, at your most necessary time into reaching into the Divinely Presence inshaAllah. Uh, Sayyidi As Salaamu Alaykum Walaykum As Salaam uh, How do we clear energy points? How do we what? Clear energy points. Energy point. 
Yeah, those types of questions that we have. <laughs> timeless reality, please. If you've got the timeless reality has all these questions and answers of energy and meditation, tafakkur and also please make uh, reviews on Amazon for the, the book and the, the types of questions on, on the clearing of the energy. You know like when you go to a doctor's office, everything you say it discloses 10 other things. So not particularly this person, poor person is asking the question but this always is an example for us as a means in which to teach people that when, when we think about how am I going to clear out negative energy, you really didn't understand the madad yet. So it points, it points to that direction. So I'm sure there's many people who have that question but didn't ask it. So how do I do there? How do I take this energy out? How do I fix this energy here? How did this? But then the madad wasn't understood. But when the madad is understood, you don't have ability to do anything. Yeah, your zikr going to lift you, not uh, these things going to go. Everything is based on my ability to to vacate, to leave, to be nothing, and that the madad of the shaykh's reflection begin to reflect within me. So instead of, because if I don't have that philosophy, I don't have that understanding and that training then it's all about me sit down I'm going to say Allah, I'm going to say Alhamdulillah, Astaghfirullah with Astaghfirullah I'm going to chase something out of me, I'm going to pull this out, I'm going to pull that out. That, that becomes completely something different in which you think you can take something out or, or to cleanse something but the most powerful way is that my whole being is off and that I'm nothing, I'm nothing and that I'm asking for the madad and the fires and that the light reflecting from the shaykh is reflecting from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad mm-hmm. And as a result when I sit in his presence with my spiritual connection like a satellite dish is reflecting the nur Muhammad within me. And as I'm sitting there that light is reflecting in me, the light is reflecting in me. That light it knows what's wrong with you, it knows where shaitan is trying to hide inside of you. That's why if people try to avoid that, they feel uncomfortable with it, they say, oh something was happening when I tried to do it but that's that reflection that needs to come. So when I sit in the presence of that mirror and it begins to reflect that energy upon me, I'm nothing, I'm nothing that dress me from these fires, dress me from these lights. And that's why then at that time I'm breathing and making my zikr with that fire's dressing. And later in the meditations I said that I'm nothing, that your light to come and I'm nothing, your light to come and I'm nothing. And I see myself to vanish and I see the fires of my shaykh to be dressing me. And that was their muhabbat and love that kept the hudur, the presence and they entered into the ocean of the fana of the shaykh. If the shaykh is within you then what is it that you have to take out? The shaykh is supposed to do that because <clears throat> if, you're, if you're fully with him inside of you and that light inside of you and that you've taken yourself out then their light within the person is then perfecting them and cleaning them and that's why Allah describes Prophet is like that. That's the reality, the Muhammadan reality fiqum that Prophet is amongst you, within you. And that that light of Prophet the Muhammadan light that the shaykh is bringing in is the one that comes in and begins to push everything out. Because it comes to clean out the Kaaba, right? Because the Muhammadan light comes to the heart and push out all the idols, there were all these things inside the heart. Because that's the virtue and the reality of the Muhammadan nur when it comes into the heart it doesn't want anyone in the heart but Allah. So it pulls all the idols out, throws all the garbage out. And that's the blessing that Allah has, has given with the light and the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Inna fatanika fatan mubina 
لِيَكْفِرَكَ تَقَدَّمْ مِنْ ذَنْبِكَ تَعَاقَرْ يُتَمَنْ نَحْمَتِهُ عَلَيْكَ فِي الصِّرَاطِ الْمُسْتَقِيمًا وَيَنْسُرُكُ اللَّهُ نَسْرًا عَزِيزًا This great fata, the great opening that uh, is the light of Prophet coming into the heart of the soul of somebody. And that when he comes in it's the light of Prophet is coming into you. Of course then Allah forgiving you because Allah said, how can I punish you when light of Prophet is with you and you're asking for forgiveness. So this Nur Muhammad comes and it should be so obvious for everybody who thinks from the world of light because light completely diffuses. If we were all just light bulbs now and, and I spread a green light, the green light of course it enters you. So when somebody says, oh, how can a light enter me? Because you're thinking physical. But if you're all just sitting there as light bulbs and a green laser starts to come through you, of course it's passing through your every element. So that light comes with this love and this ishq and begin to come inside the heart and then begin to correct the, the qadam and the steps of every movement you're making as a result of Muhammadan light within you. Allah says, I'm going to forgive all your past sins, ta'akhar, all of them and everything that's coming in front of you that you're going to do wrong, I'm going to forgive those too and then I'm going to support you on Sirat al-Mustaqeem because Prophet is Sayyidina Sirat al-Mustaqeem. And Allah's support is with what? Yansurkullahu Nasran Aziz. Well, I'm going to support you with Nasran is Prophet and Aziz with Allah's might and majesty that nothing can come against it and everything collapses in front of it. So this is a this is Allah's opening the Jannah in the fatanika fatan mubeen, the clear victory. Is if Prophet light is within your soul, that's the most victory that anybody could ever imagine inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzat amma yasifoon, salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa, tasir al-Surat al-Fatiha.